Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, today I am bringing forward to you a question that one of my friends from IIT has mailed me uh, two weeks back. Uh, he found out that I have put up a YouTube channel uh, trying to uh, share my knowledge with uh, fellow students and uh, colleagues. Uh, so he has sent me this uh, challenge saying that this has appeared in one of the physics Olympiads in their country. Uh, so. Uh, last year, 2019. So uh, I have slightly modified the question so as to suit the needs of this particular video. Okay, so uh, um, this is a question on electrostatics and electrostatic potential to be more precise. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and share the formal wording of the modified version of the question that uh, has appeared in the Olympiad. So this one is it. So electric potential at the center of uh, a non-conducting cube with uniform volume charge density of side length A uh, is provided to us in this particular question at the start. So this is the expression that he's saying is the potential due to a uniformly charged cube at its center. Okay, right. So someone has uh, put efforts to calculate it. For the entirety of this comprehension and problems that follow, any computed numerical constant should be written to three significant figures. Okay, so you are going to use this expression for the two questions that follow. And uh, in those questions, if you were trying to make some arithmetic operations and you need to write the final answer in terms of the numerical constants, uh, you need to round it off to three significant figures. So this is the information given. Let's go to the first part of the question. What is the approximate electric potential at the tip of a non-conducting pyramid with a square base of side length A and height of A by two and uniform volume charge density of rho? There are four options. You need to mark the best possible option. Then the second question, what is the approximate electric potential due to a non-conducting square plate with a side length A of uniform surface charge density sigma at a height a by 2 above its center. Again, four options and right? based on the needs of the uh, question, you need to mark the best possible one. So you want to give it a try. Uh, just pause the video here. Try it out for some time. Right. Um, and then we can go ahead with the solution for the problem. OK, so I'll give you the actual question had three parts. So I removed one part of it. So in this uh, particular solution, we'll go ahead with one by one. So first I'll give you the solution of the first part of the pyramid calculation. And second one, we'll try to calculate for the square plate. Okay, so here's the solution for the first part. Knowing that the center of the cube uh, potential is known to us in the expression form, uh, we can visualize that each cube, solid cube, is made of six pyramids uh, of square base of side A and height of the pyramid, obviously, if its apex is at the center of the cube, would be half of the side, right? So which is the question that he's asking. So I tried to mark those six pyramids in three different diagrams. You could see one top, one bottom, one left, one right, and one the front and one behind. So you should be able to believe that there are six pyramids that fit into the cube. And these square pyramids have the same property as mentioned in the question. The side is A and the height is A by 2. So since potential is a scalar and obeys superposition principle, the potential due to, let's say, this yellow pyramid at its apex would be one sixth of the potential that would be calculated for the cube. So first one is a pretty straightforward question, right? And it would be uh, whatever expression he gave divided by six. And when you do this calculation, you'll get some number, which if you round it off to three significant figures, so I think zero is in, insignificant. So three, one, six would be the best possible answer for the first one. So the answer for the first one would be option C. Let's move ahead to more interesting questions. So knowing uh, this cube and pyramid answer, can you be able to sort out the uh, solution for the non-conducting square plate and that too at a specific point is asking the plate is of side A and at a height A by two about its cent above its center. That means on its axis is asking us to mark the best possible answer. Okay, so let's go to this one. So this is slightly uh, more uh, difficult or a challenge uh, to realize how to go forward from the pyramid to the square plate. So I would uh, urge you to see a similar sort of technique. I'm not saying it would be the same way of uh, calculation, but a similar way of thinking will be utilized in a problem from Erodo textbook, which is 1.24 
two four two, wherein the usual uh, norm of calculus in ca um, calculating moment of inertia is challenged. The way we generally do our calculations in moment of inertia or any such uh, situations is to take a lower dimensional body calculation and then integrate it over to the higher dimension. For example, it's customary to know that the moment of inertia of a shell is 2 by 3 mR square. Using the 2 by 3 mR square, we integrate for a solid sphere. But this 1.242, I love this question because I think what he does in that question is he asks you to assume that you already know the moment of inertia of a solid sphere, 2 by 5 mR square is already known. And from there, he would ask you to derive the moment of inertia of a shell. So from a higher dimension to a differential element, that means instead of using integration, you're going to use differentiation, which is a nice change. And it, it, it adds to the depth of our understanding of calculus in physics. Okay, so I urge you to go through that. I'll be using a similar technique in this particular problem. So from the first question, I already know the moment, uh, the potential at the top. Can you see on the left of your screen on the top apex? I'm pointing out. So I know what is the potential at the apex due to this entire pyramid, solid pyramid of certain charge density rho. Okay. Then what I will say is, if this brick by brick, I am considering it as a differential element. The last layer of the brick, if I increase the layer, right? Let's say this height of the pyramid is h. Then if I increase that height by dh the last layer that gets added will change my function from the potential V to V plus DV. Okay. Of which I'll argue, and I think you'll agree that the V contribution of that would be from the original pyramid and DV contribution would be from the differential layer that would be laid at the bottom. And we realize very quickly that this differential layer in lower dimension is equivalent to a square plate of side A. But since this height is, already a by two. So this will fit our condition that is asked in the second question. That means if I can find this DV and somehow equivalently convert this one into a square plate, my job would be done to calculate potential contribution due to this square plate at half its side length height. Okay, so square plate at the bottom, I repeat, and the height of a by two about its center. So that's the whole idea I'm going to do. So that's what I wrote. We can conclude dv is due to an equivalent square plate of side A at its axial height of A by 2. Okay. Now, if that equivalence has to be written, then the charge in this three-dimensional figure should be equivalent to the charge in the two-dimensional diagram. What is the charge here? It would be rho into dh height into base area. I have written that. If it has to be converted into a two-dimensional sigma plate, then sigma into area should be the charge. So I just cancelled. So in my final answer of differentiation, I would replace the rho dh with a sigma of equivalent plate. Okay, so that's the idea. So using that idea, I realize, just let's come over here. Right. So the answer to the la uh, previous question, we already knew that the potential at the apex point of a pyramid is given by 0 0.316 rho a square by epsilon naught. I will say this potential is uh, a, initially a relation with variable h and variable s. Okay. But we also realize that these two h and s in this problem are interconnected variables. They're not independent variables. So you know that uh, one is double of the other. You could see h is two times s. So I can write this entire thing in one variable. Okay. So I'll write, choose to write it in terms of h. Okay. So if I were to replace a, I have to replace it with two h. Can you see? I've replaced a with two h. So I would say v of h function is this expression with four h square as the factor. Okay, so then I would say dv of that due to a change in dh would be simply, I have to differentiate this with respect to h, right? So dv with respect to dh would be this one written as 8h dh. Okay, 8h dh. This dv I would argue is due to that square plate extra that has been added. Only difference is I have to convert rho to sigma. So in this rho 8h dh that I ended up getting, I now substitute the value of sigma as this rho dh and substitute back the value of h in terms of a because your final answer should be written in terms of a. Right. It's always customary to first differentiate and then substitute the value. You're not supposed to differentiate this. There's no meaning to that. Okay. So that's why. So the two substitutions I make is rho dh is equal to sigma and the value of h I'd substitute as a by two. That immediately yields the required dv in terms of a. 
and then I'll argue this dv was due to that square plate at the end. Okay, so you just multiply with four to this 0 0.316, 0316, and you'll end up getting this. And there will be four digit, you can round it off to three significant figures. So this is the entire idea, which I find it very fascinating. I hope you found it equally fascinating and enriching. So the answer for this, therefore, would be the first option. Okay, right. So if you had liked this video, please do like it and subscribe to my channel for the regular updates and please do share this content with your peers whether it is students or lecturers I, I would keep motivating me to provide you with a quality content of this kind in the future too okay thanks for stopping by and see you in the next video